This is Apollo Control Houston at 89 hours, 19 minutes into the flight. We are now less than 30 seconds uh, to the scheduled time of ignition for the maneuver to start Apollo 8 on its course back to Earth. Uh, in the last 15 seconds uh, prior to ignition, the crew will be uh, burning their service propulsion system, or rather their reaction control system engines to settle propellants. And uh, here in Mission Control Center, we've just counted down to the burn. We should have uh, ignition at this time. That will be a three minute and 18 second burn nominally. Uh, it will increase the spacecraft velocity by about 3,522 feet per second, or some 2,395 miles per hour. Following the maneuver, the spacecraft should have a uh, velocity of about uh, 8,800 feet per second, uh, some 6,000 miles per hour. And here in Mission Control, uh, it is relatively quiet, as it has been since we lost uh, communications with the spacecraft as they went over the moon's horizon. Uh, at this point, uh, flight controllers here in Mission Control uh, as with uh, the rest of the world, uh, they are waiting. Uh, coming up in just a few seconds now, we should have uh, shutdown of the service propulsion system engine on the spacecraft. Uh, that should have occurred at uh, 89 hours, or rather will be occurring at uh, 89 hours, 22 minutes, uh, 34 seconds. Uh, actually, we are uh, just a little less than a minute from that event. and the clock here in Mission Control Center that is counting down to the time when we will reacquire the spacecraft shows that we have six minutes, 30 seconds until reacquisition. At this point, the SPS engine should be shut down, and we will now be waiting for the spacecraft to come over the lunar horizon and uh, 
give us a report on their status. We now show five minutes, 45 seconds until reacquisition. This is Apollo Control Houston at 89 hours 26 minutes. Uh, flight Director Milton Windler has just advised flight, his flight control team here in Mission Control Center that uh, we have less than three minutes now until reacquisition of the spacecraft. And he requested that they uh, monitor their consoles, uh, get prepared to uh, reacquire, and to get a status from the crew. This is Apollo Control Houston. We now show less than 30 seconds until reacquisition. Uh, we'll stand by for the first words from the Apollo 8 crew as they come over the, over the lunar horizon uh, and into acquisition. We have RF signal, and uh, there's a little bit of a cheer going up from the flight controllers here. We should be hearing from the crew shortly. Our station at uh, Honeysuckle, Australia, reports that uh, we do have a radio signal from the spacecraft. They're having a bit of trouble locking up at this point, uh, to the point where we can get uh, voice communication from the crew.
Houston. This is Mission Control Houston. Our flight dynamics officer says that burn is good. I'll try again, Apollo 8. I say this gives you the sensation that you're climbing. All right. What's next on the docket? High gain antenna. At the uh, first uh, convenient moment, we'd like to have the high gain antenna. You've got it. You're on the high gain. All right. This is Apollo Control. We continue to get a great deal of noise uh, coming from our site at Honeysuckle, Australia. However, the pertinent information has been received, and that is that the uh, maneuver 
the trans-earth injection maneuver uh, was very close to nominal. Flight Dynamics Officer uh, expressed, expressed his pleasure with it. Apollo 8, Houston. Uh, stand by, here's a call to the crew. We do not have any data on the ground yet. The uh, voice loop appears good. We'd like to try to have you manually acquire on the high gain. Okay. And this will take a wide beam width. Wide beam width, Roger. Roger, read you loud and clear. Initial tracking indicates four foot per second at eight hours. We'll put you on target. Four foot per second at eight hours. That's correct. That's 15 hours. Roger. Roger. Apollo 8, we have data. We'd like to have the tape recorder. You can have it. Thank you. Houston, Apollo 8, which battery do you want us to start charging? Okay, we'd like to start on battery alpha. Battery alpha, okay. Hmm. Apollo 8, would you go to uh, narrow beam on high gain? Sounds real good now. This is Apollo Control at 89 hours, 51 minutes. Here in Mission Control Center, we're continuing to assess the effects of that maneuver. And uh, we're just in the process now of playing back the tape data of the burn. Uh, of course, that maneuver occurring on the uh, backside of the moon, we were unable to monitor it uh, as it occurred. Uh, now looking at the results that we would have seen had we been able to uh, receive oh, communications from the spacecraft uh, as the burn occurred. Uh, we've just put in a call to the crew. Here's that okay, conversation. Okay, if you'll go to Pooh and accept, we'll update your rest map. And I have some backup GDC angles for the new entry rest map. Roger, understand. Uh, Pooh and accept and you'll give us a new rest map. Hey, Perm. Roger. Your backup GDC alignment. Roll. Three, zero, eight. Pitch. 
two, zero, niner. Yaw, three, five, seven. Over. On what set of stars? That's on uh, Sirius and Rigel. Understand, roll 308, pitch 209, yaw 357. That's affirmative, Apollo 8. Morning, Apollo 8. Uh, Deke here. I'd just like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas on behalf of everyone in the control center and I'm sure everyone around the world. Uh, none of us ever expect to have a better Christmas present than this one. Uh, hope you get a good night's sleep from here on and enjoy your Christmas dinner tomorrow and look forward to seeing you in Hawaii on the 28th. Okay, later. We'll see you there. That was a, a very very nice ride. That last one. This engine is as smooth as glass. Yeah, we gathered that. An outstanding job all the way around. Thank everybody on the ground for us. Yeah, it's pretty clear we, we wouldn't be anywhere if we didn't have them doing it for helping us out here. We concur in that. Well, I concur, too. Even Mr. Kraft does something right once in a while. He got tired of waiting for you to talk and went home. Okay. Uh, this is Houston. Our capsule communicator in that last uh, exchange was astronaut Donald K. Slayton, chief of flight crew operations here at the Manned Spacecraft Center. Shortly after we uh, acquired the spacecraft and established communications with the crew uh, here in the control center, our big display uh, up in the front changed from a lunar map to an Earth map, and uh, the colors on it are red and green. Uh, we also had a Christmas tree brought in, uh, and it's now standing uh, down in the front of the control center. Uh, looks as if it stands about uh, six feet tall and it's decorated with uh, lights and tinsel and uh, uh, with a big blue ornament up on top. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, the computer is yours. And I guess we have an IMU alignment and a P-23 on the schedule. Okay, thank you. We're doing IMU alignment coming up. Jam and block. Roger. Mm -hmm. Apollo 8, uh, Houston, we'd like to have you uh, cycle your zero optic switch prior to beginning P-52. We're going to see if we can find some stars here before we uh, do this D-52. All right. And uh, we've got a couple of words for you. Jack's been watching you since uh, LOI, and he has a few words he wants us to give you. Who has? Typhoid Jack uh, here, and uh, we've got some good words here that originated at the Cape with a bunch of friends of yours. And uh, it's sort of in a paraphrase of a poem that uh, you're probably familiar with. Uh, do you read me, Apollo 8? You're loud and clear, Jack. <laughs> okay, it was the night before Christmas and way out in space. The Apollo 8 crew had just won the moon race. The headsets were hung by the consoles with care in hopes that Chris Kraft soon would be there. Now, Frank Borman was nestled all snug in his bed while visions of rest mats danced in his head. And Jim Lovell in his couch and Anders in the bay were racking their brains over a computer display. When out of the disky there rose such a clatter, Frank sprang from his bed to see what was the matter. Away to the sextant he flew like a flash to make sure they weren't going to crash. 
The light on the breast of the moon's jagged crust gave a luster of green cheese to the gray lunar dust. When what to his wondering eyes should appear but a Burma shave sign saying Kilroy was here. <laughs> but Frank was no fool, he knew pretty quick that they had been first. This must be a trick. More rapid than rockets, his curses they came. He turned to his crewmen and called them a name. Now level, now Anders. Now don't think I'd fall for that old joke you've written up on the wall. They spoke not a word but grinning like elves and laughed at their joke in spite of themselves. Frank sprang to his couch. To the ship gave a thrust and away they all flew past the gray lunar dust. But we heard them explain ere they flew around the moon. Merry Christmas to Earth. We'll be back there real soon. Great job, gang. Thank you very much. That's a very good point. But in order to win the race, you got to end up on the carrier. We'll see you there. Hey, Jack, you really got Bill trained. <laughs> okay. I, I certainly hope so. You did pretty well, Jim. You must have talked on the way out there. Uh, that rendition of the night before Christmas was read up to the crew by uh, astronaut uh, Harrison Schmidt, Jack Schmidt, who uh, worked with Lovell uh, quite extensively uh, prior to the mission in uh, going over the uh, lunar sightings and the photography that he would do in lunar orbit. At uh, 90 hours, three minutes into the flight, this is Apollo Control. Uh, Houston, this is uh, Apollo 8. Go ahead. Roger, we got an alignment with your new refs, Matt. Now, what's the pro on the program here? You want us a P-23 and then uh, what? Looks like some sleep's coming up. That's what I wanted you to say. We used up the... the uh, Gimbal angles of 10 and 45 with the uh, th this ref's map, right? That's affirmative. Okay. Follow eight, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Apollo eight. All right. Uh Notice if you're starting on your P23, which is the last real scheduled activity. Uh, initial tracking looks like uh, the initial mid-course may be less than the four foot per second on the first guess. And we've looked at your burn data. It's all just as smooth as you said. Everything on there looked real nominal. Systems now look good. Looks like in the PTC attitude, we should be able to uh, switch Omnis for you if you'd like to do that. Um, we were having good success with predicting on the way out where to switch the antennas. And if it'll help any, we can do that on the way back in. That'd be nice if you could do it, but we'll keep one man at the shop to watch the gimbal angles, but if you could switch the the, uh, the Omnis, it should save us a lot of problems. Okay, we'll do that. When you get in the PTC attitude, well, we'll, uh, we'll let you know when we're taking command of the Omni antenna switching. Okay. Just be careful what you do with the tape recorder. Bill's a little sensitive about that. All right. Uh, we were listening to the tape dumps, and uh, looks like Bill gets a happy new year after all. A happy new year? How come, uh, Ken? Uh, is that a in joke? Uh, no, we got that off of his tape dump. Uh, he and Jim were discussing that one. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. This is Apollo Control Houston at 90 hours, 18 minutes. Uh, our displays here in Mission Control are now beginning to show the effects of that uh, trans-Earth injection maneuver. 
Uh, we show an altitude above the moon at this time of 2,802 nautical miles. Uh, our spacecraft velocity is 6,050 6, feet per second and uh, slowing. And our weight following that uh, maneuver is now 32,180 pounds. On board the spacecraft at the present time, uh, the crew is finishing up uh, some last minute activities uh, connected with onboard navigation. And uh, then they plan to get a little bit of rest. Uh, Frank Borman uh, is scheduled to be in a sleep period at this time. And uh, we've had some indications from the crew that uh, Lovell and Anders also hope to get a little bit of rest as soon as possible. We have uh, some brief conversations with the crew uh, that we've recorded since our previous report. We'll play those back for you now and then stand by briefly for any live communications with the spacecraft. Uh, Houston, this is uh, Apollo 8. Go ahead. Roger, we got an alignment with your new refs, Matt. Now, what's the pro on the program here? You want us a P-23 and then uh, what? Looks like some fleets coming up. That's what I wanted you to say. We used the, the uh, gimbal angles of 10 and 45 with the, uh, the this refs map, right? That's affirmative. Okay. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston, Apollo 8. All right. Uh, notice that you're starting on your P-23, which is the last real scheduled activity. Uh, initial tracking looks like uh, the initial mid-course may be less than the four foot per second on the first guess. And we've looked at your burn data. It's all just as smooth as you said. Everything on there looked real nominal. Systems now look good. Looks like in the BTC attitude, we should be able to uh, switch Omnis for you if you'd like to do that. Um, we were having good success with predicting on the way out where to switch the antennas. And if it'll help any, we can do that on the way back in. That'd be nice if you could do it, but uh, we'll keep one man at the shop to watch the gimbal angles. But if you could switch the, the, uh, the Omnis, it should save us a lot of problems. Okay, we'll do that. When you get in the PPC attitude, well, we'll, uh, we'll let you know when we're taking command of the Omni antenna switching. Okay. Just be careful what you do with the tape recorder. Bill's a little sensitive about that. All uh, right, uh, we were listening to the tape dumps, and uh, looks like Bill gets a happy new year after all. A happy new year? How come, again? Is that a in joke? Uh, no, we got that off of his tape dump. Mm -hmm. uh, he and Jim were discussing that one. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> TPI 11, we don't need. Houston, are you getting all this data from uh, P-23? Houston, Apollo 8. Uh, go ahead, Apollo 8. We want to know if you're getting the data from P-23. That's affirmative. This is Apollo Control Houston at 90 hours, 50 minutes into the flight of Apollo 8. At the present time, our spacecraft is at an altitude above the moon of 4,504 nautical miles and traveling at a speed of 5,645 feet per second. We've heard very little from the 
uh, crew since our last report. Eureka. Uh, we do have a, uh, a couple of brief exchanges uh, on tape. We'll play those back for you and uh, then stand by for uh, any conversation. This is Apollo Control. Uh, we're expecting capsule communicator Ken Mattingly to put in a call to the crew shortly. Uh, while we wait for that, uh, we'll pass along some information uh, that we've been requested to gather and also some additional uh, information on the uh, results of that trans-Earth injection maneuver. Uh, the trans-Earth trans injection burn uh, occurred on time. It uh, lasted for 3 minutes and 23 seconds. We had uh, originally estimated that it would last about 3 minutes 18 seconds. Uh, we obtained uh, almost precisely the amount of velocity change from that burn that had been planned. Uh, the figure that we have at this point is a velocity change of 3,522.8 feet per second. Uh, we'd been shooting for 3,522.3 feet per second. Uh, so we would only have been off about uh, five-tenths of a foot per second. Uh, as a result of that maneuver, our current figure is that uh, splash will occur uh, in the mid-Pacific at 147 hours, 4 minutes, 59 seconds. Uh, that's a very precise figure, and I doubt that it will uh, continue to hold true through the uh, coast phase and uh, uh, trajectory analysis that will be done en route uh, back to Earth. And we do anticipate that figure will change. Coming up at uh, 100 hours, 47 minutes, 47 seconds ground elapsed time, uh, we'll be going through the change in the sphere of influence. This will be the point at which the moon's gravity ceases to be the dominant influence on the spacecraft. Uh, that will also be the point at which the spacecraft uh, will reach its minimum inertial velocity and then start to accelerate toward Earth. Uh, this will occur at an altitude above the moon uh, of 33,821 nautical miles. And at that point, uh, we'll be 175,528 miles from Earth. The uh, velocity at that point uh, will be 4,839 feet per second with respect to the moon, and it will be 4,176 feet per second with respect to Earth. Uh, we also were requested to pass along some figures on uh, altitude and velocity at the beginning of the trans-Earth injection maneuver and at the uh, end of that maneuver. At the beginning of the maneuver, our velocity was about uh, 5,350 feet per second. And uh, following the maneuver, our velocity was uh, 8,841 feet per second. Our uh, altitude at the beginning of the trans-Earth injection maneuver was 60 nautical miles above the surface of the moon. And at the conclusion of that maneuver, three minutes and uh, 23 seconds later, it was 66.5 nautical miles. At the present time, our uh, altitude above the moon is 4,876 nautical miles, and our velocity is 5,587 feet per second and continuing to decrease very gradually. Uh, we are still anticipating uh, sometime in the near future a call to the crew and uh, we'll pick back up again when that uh, comes through. This is Apollo Control at 90 hours, 58 minutes into the flight of Apollo 8. Houston, Apollo 8. Go ahead, Apollo 8.
Houston, Apollo 8. Go ahead, Apollo 8. Hey, hey uh, Ken, we about run out of gas here on this next set of stars. And, uh, would you ask your people to be especially alert there and watching the systems tonight? Sure will, Frank. Okay, it's maneuver to uh, pitch 10 and yaw 45. Uh, Roger. I have, uh, let's see, we've got a hydrogen purge line heater that ought to come on about 9140 and an oxygen hydrogen fuel cell purge for 92 hours. Okay, will you call us about those, please? I sure will. And, uh, let's see, we, uh, just wanted to let you know we've got a real good battery charge going here this time. It looks like, uh, it looks just like the ones in the book. And I'd like to get a battery C voltage for you shut down and a sleep report on what you did in the okay. in lunar orbit and your plans for the next couple hours. Okay. Three seven volts on battery C. Roger, three seven volts. We all only got about two hours sleep today, uh, Max. Uh, Ken, we're gonna now. Bill's gonna stay up for a while, and Jim and I are gonna sack out. And then we're gonna try to rotate the short sleep cycles until uh, we can get back to the normal ones. All oh, right, Roger. Sounds like a good idea. And. Uh, Ecoms on the ground tell us that the flying Ecom can go ahead and put his hydrogen purge line heater on and we'll get ready for a fuel cell. Thank you. He can't turn on his radio. There he goes. I don't want to disappoint anybody too much if we knock off those last two stars, but uh, Jim is just in a daze, and so am I. All right, no sweat. Thank you. Mm. Apollo 8, uh, one of the things we'd like to have uh, before you shut down also is uh, verb 64 so we can watch the pointing angles. Roger. Hey, Frank, you might be interested. They're having some trouble with the medics, P2. Huh? The medics can't clean out their P2. Worn the thing out at the bearings. <laughs> hey, uh, Ken, if you tell the people if you see anything getting uh, close to gimbal lock, to be sure and whistle too, will you? We sure will, Frank. You only have one of your, make sure one of you one keeps your comp carrier on. That's right, we'll keep one man with a comp carrier on. Apollo 8, uh, you got uh, some big yawn angle there. Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, Houston. Apollo 8, Apollo 8, Houston.
Apollo 8, Houston. This is Apollo Control at 91 hours, 22 minutes. Uh, since our last report, we've had a couple of brief conversations with the crew. Uh, they indicated that uh, they were very tired and had uh, perhaps gotten uh, about two hours of sleep uh, prior to the trans-Earth injection maneuver. Uh, Frank Borman advised that he and uh, Jim Lovell were going to attempt to get some sleep shortly and that uh, Bill Anders would stand watch while they were uh, getting some sleep and then uh, uh, when one of them awoke, Bill would uh, get some sleep. We'll play back uh, that tape for you and then uh, stand by as uh, uh, Capsule Communicator Apollo 8, uh, Houston. puts in a call to the crew. Apollo 8, Houston. Houston. Copy that you are now in the PTC attitude and we're watching your gimbal angle. We apparently do not have a down link voice, but the data is good. Houston, follow eight, over. Loud and clear, eight. This is Mission Control Houston. At 91 hours, 31 minutes, our spacecraft is at an altitude of 6,673 nautical miles above the moon. And we're traveling at a speed of 5,375 feet per second. It appears that uh, we're going to have no further communication with the spacecraft uh, at this time. Uh, we'll take the circuit down and uh, come back up when uh, next we reestablish contact or with a periodic uh, status report. Apollo 8, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Okay, uh... In order for us to handle the antenna switching, I guess we'd like to have the aux tape switched to off and the tape forward switch off. And we'll be switching between Omni's Bravo and Delta. Okay, we're going to be switching between Omni's Bravo and Delta. Okay. All right, and I'm going to... You bug me when you get over 50 degrees of yaw. So uh, I'll probably be watching that number pretty closely. We'd like to have the biomed switch to the right position. Okay, and uh, for your own information, the uh, fuel we show and the different quads I have here, if you'd like to copy it. Okay, ready to copy. Okay. I'll give you the percentage on alpha, six 
zero. Bravo, five, seven. Charlie. Is that the present time, but I can't plot him that fast again. Okay, I'm sorry. Alpha is six zero. For what time? On oh, 91.36. Uh, okay, stand by. Okay, what's the problem? Okay, that's 5-7. Okay. And Delta, five seven decimal three three eight four two. That's a coincidence. That's just what I worked out on level slide rule. How are we doing on the cryos? Oh, you've got uh, some pretty good numbers on that that I set up yesterday, and you had about 160 hours. Well, I'll check that out, but you were fat on trial. I've got some SPS Delta V. You've got 3320. If you fly the service module RCS through the DAP, you have 142, and through SCS, it's 121. Roger. Apollo 8, Houston, uh, we can't monitor on a little bit rate whether you started your fuel cell purge. If you haven't, uh, we can go ahead and start now. And if you keep us posted as you go through it. All right, you want an O2 and an H2 purge again? That's affirmative. You shall have it. Thank you. You may be in uh, Omni Alpha. All right. Can you confirm that we're set up to switch between Bravo and Delta? You are now. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And uh, you are in the fuel cell purge. Okay, I understand the purge is complete. Thank you. And in reference to your cryo, looks like uh, we'll have 180 pounds in each oxygen tank except, and 11 pounds in each hydrogen tank, and you're well above the single tank capability. This is Apollo Control at 92 hours, 8 minutes into the flight of Apollo 8. 
And at the present time, our spacecraft is at an altitude of 8,545 nautical miles above the moon, traveling at a speed of some 5,238 feet per second. It's been some time since we've heard from uh, any of the crewmen. Uh, at uh, about 91 hours, 25 minutes, uh, we had a report from the spacecraft that uh, uh, Commander Frank Borman and uh, Jim Lovell, Command Module Pilot, would be uh, attempting to get some sleep. And uh, Bill Anders was to stand watch. Uh, we do have uh, a small amount of tape of uh, previous conversations that uh, we've had since our last report. Uh, we'll play that back for you now. <laughs> 